Last week, I think it, almost exactly a week, was it 6.15, Tom? I think it was right about the same time last Monday. Uh, fun starts. Tom Lee joined us with a tactical buy. He uh, said it would be a 100-point gain or more in the S&P uh, when the CPI came in cooler than expected. Here's what he said. We thought a tactical sort of opportunity was emerging because last week the market sold off because the jobs reports are strong, yields really popped. So investors are kind of fed higher for longer, a little bearish into this week. And I think core CPI could come in at 0.2 or better. So it could be a huge downside surprise. And that CPI reading did indeed come in cooler than expected. And the S&P uh, finished last week at 45.05. I think it was 33.98 is where it closed the previous week. So that's 107 points. Joining us now to follow up, Tom Lee, a co-founder of Fundstrike Global Advisors and a CNBC contributor. The thing is, Tom, uh, you had to be right about the CPI. And that, that's pretty good. But that was kind of expected. But then you had to be right about the reaction, which is on any data that comes in, you never know because it's good is bad, bad is good, good jobs numbers, bad job, you just never know. So in that case, you had to be right uh, about both and, and you had to be right about the, you know, how large it was and, and the timing, which is not something you want to do a lot. You're not going to do that this week? Uh, as you mentioned last week, it wasn't wise to do that no. last week. And yes, I, I, I I don't think it's, it was wise to do, but I thought it was important at the time because our clients were quite nervous about hot inflation after those job report numbers. So we just thought it was, it was an opportunity to make a trade. But it's a trade, but what, what was more important for me was that uh, as we tested the 4200 level, which most people saw as a reflex rally or a rally in a bear market, and even when we got through it, it was like, well, we're still at the high end of the range. And to, to make the call that we will significantly go above 4,200 and break out of that range to almost a new bull. I don't know whether the S&P actually is up 20 percent, but that was what was significant. Now, I don't know what that means from where we get. We could still turn and go back down to 4,000. That's what we need you here for. Is that going to happen? Uh, well, 4,505 is a very important level for markets because it, it is a 76 percent recovery, you know, Fibonacci from the 2020 two highs to the lows. So now that we closed above it, I, I actually think the probabilities favor us going back to the, old, to the prior highs. So we've cleared, 45.5 essentially becomes support now. That's interesting. Uh, so most people, I've seen the latest thesis is that uh, we got here, but new highs might be a couple of years away. We could do more treading. You think we hit new highs this year? Uh, yes. I, All time I highs in the S&P. Yeah, I think we'll we'll be well above the the prior highs. Before well the end above of the, year. the prior highs. Yes. What, what do you uh, put the, the prior high at? What's the exact number? Uh, Forty-eight nineteen. Forty-eight nineteen. <clears throat> so that's another. You think another ten percent this year or more? Or, or more, yeah. I mean, I I think there's even a chance that we could be, you know, close to five thousand. But a lot would have to go right to get towards five thousand. Like a soft landing. A soft landing and, and earnings visibly have to start turning. I think this quarter, you know, about half of the S&P is going to start posting earnings growth. And, you know, by the end of the year, it's, it may be 100 percent of the S&P posting earnings growth. Uh, there's still five and a half trillion of cash sitting on the sidelines. Um, you know, that's almost a trillion higher than it was at the start of the year. So there's still a lot of skepticism. And then inflation has to be on that glide path lower, which we're, we're pretty confident that what we saw last week on CPI, the core being 0.2, you know, you might see 0.2 or less in July and August. So if we get a few more of those, right. then... Well, how much of this is dependent on... And where are you on what the Fed does then in all this? Uh, well, I, th I think they've committed to a July hike, so right. that, that 25 basis <coughs> points is there. But then I think that there's going to be a debate whether that's the last hike for the cycle. And is that part of your calculus in terms of where these numbers... Uh, you know, one, one more hike, I think you could still get to all-time highs, so something in November. Maybe but if, even two. Oh, you think 50, I was thinking 25, 50, it, 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 we're, we're sort of splitting hairs here. I don't that's know right, it really yeah. That much. One or two more hikes I don't think um, yeah. hurts all-time highs. But if the Fed thinks inflation is a lot stickier and, and then maybe terminal rates of six, that, that would 
obviously be a headwind for stocks. So tell me your crazy Bitcoin stuff again, because it, it always seems crazy, and then sometimes it happens. But you, you, 100,000 by when? Uh, you know, cl something around 200,000 within five years. 200,000? Yes. Within five years? Yes. And there are... This is a better prediction than 100 points in a week. Five years, I think, is much smarter for you, because we yes. could all be dead. It's uh, a better time frame. <laughs> right. We may not be there to... Uh, our window might be closing. So 200,000. Yeah. <laughs> because what? Just give us the, the, like, the underlying thesis here. Well, uh, Bitcoin's very useful. I think in the U.S. there's a tendency to think the financial system works well for everybody, but for people who have right. money, it, it does work well. But, you know, even in the U.S., 46... But do you need an ETF for, the, to, for that to happen, for example? Do you need all sorts of other things in the regulatory scheme to change for your numbers to get to where you want yes, them to be? Yes, you do. It's, it is flows. Um, okay. I think the Bitcoin ETF, I think people underestimate how important that will be because... Because you think mutual funds will then buy it and other people will do yeah. it? Yeah. And, and, and the multiplier right now is, is roughly four to one, meaning a, a dollar of inflows is four dollars to the change in the price of Bitcoin's market cap. So, you know, if you get a hundred billion or two hundred billion of demand, that's, right. you know, eight hundred But if you don't get an ETF, for example, then what? Well, then, then you're going to rely on sort of organic network effects. But I do think an ETF, you know, is very likely, but that would also be an important, a very important and underestimated catalyst. Great. Got a lot, uh, a lot of predictions there that are going to be testable once again, which you're not, you don't shy away from, which is why we love you, Tom. Thank you.